Well, the issue of corruption is raising its head again in connection with COVID-19 state procurement, but many would say this comes as no surprise and is embedded. Something the President said today again that he's prepared to tackle. However, let the pandemic not allow us to forget the nefarious effects of corruption and disinformation of a few years ago and the role the British PR firm Bell Pottinger played in it. A documentary called Influence has made its South African debut at the Encounter Documentary Film Festival. We'll speak to one of the co-directors, Dan and Neil, in a moment. But first, let's take a look. A $500 million contract in Iraq. As a journalist, you start thinking, what's happening here? Something's not okay. What went wrong? The British public relations company, Bell Pottinger, stands accused of fomenting racial tensions in post-apartheid South Africa. You know, this is a perfect environment to influence narratives and play on fear. I am going up against one of the biggest PR... Right, well, let's speak to the co-director, Diana Neal. Now, Diana, good evening to you. How big is this PR business? You looked at influence, you looked at a big part of it. I mean, is it possible to know what influence it has on our international society? Absolutely, Stephen. I think uh, when we began to look into this issue in 2017, shortly after the Gupta leaks, as you'll recall, were being investigated by a team of journalists at Daily Maverick, uh, Anna Bongani at News24. Uh, when we decided to make this film, uh, we began to look into, into just how deep the story goes, not only into the, the history of Lord Tim Bell, who was the founder of the company, but also into the effects of, of um, weaponized PR and communication today. And indeed, I think uh, we can safely say that the effects are incredibly far-reaching. Uh, what, what we're seeing today now is that many multinationals are adopting these practices and making them part of their corporate offering, part of their, of their own uh, operations within their companies, um, both to, to save costs, but also, I think, to have more control over their messaging. And what that means is that uh, more than ever, we need to be vigilant about where the messaging is uh, coming from that we are consuming. I suppose the only reason people message in this way, to use that phrase, that they do this, they try and exert influences to their own benefit, not to my benefit, not to yours, but to their own. Absolutely. And, and, that, and that, that is indeed the problem. I think that there's been such a, a shift in, uh, in the, the reasons for communication and the need for communication over the last uh, 10 and 20 years, particularly with the rise of the Internet. Uh, no longer is it about uh, offering a public service, giving people the information they need to know to get through their day. Now it's about, uh, you know, turning us into uh, increasingly into, into consumers uh, to such an extent now that I think uh, with some of the social media platforms like Facebook, we ourselves have become uh, the product uh, and, and the weapon in, in many ways uh, that, that is sold to the highest bidder in terms of our data. So it's certainly become a much more complicated space uh, and, and definitely needs a lot more investigation and a lot more uh, deep digging. In a way, I mean, this is quite a strange thing, but your, your documentary was being released just as the coronavirus sort of got going. Um, and now we're seeing so much information, disinformation. I mean, we talk about these sort of pandemics of disinformation mm -hmm. around the coronavirus. It shows perhaps your doc documentary is more important after the virus than it was before. Certainly. You know, when we started making this film in 2017, as I mentioned, we, we could not have known that it would be more relevant now than it was when we, when we started making it. Um, I think that says a lot about uh, the, the influence of a firm like Bell Pottinger and the work that they were doing, but also just about, uh, you know, what has happened to our communications platforms over the years. Uh, one thing that does give me some hope, though, is I think uh, three years ago, uh, shortly after Trump's inauguration uh, and uh, election as president, uh, when all of this started to become a mainstream uh, way of life, we, we didn't really know what we were dealing with. Now we have organizations and individuals who spend their, their lives looking uh, for this kind of misinformation and disinformation on the web uh, to try to protect us from it. Uh, and it certainly is comforting to know that there is a bit of a fight back that has started to be implemented. So, I mean, it's tempting to question literally everything you see and hear now, that everything you see on Twitter is wrong, or everything you see on TV is wrong. Um, how can you do that without being a conspiracy theorist? Or, Diana, would your advice that actually we should all just be a conspiracy theorist? <laughs> It's difficult not to, to, to be looking under rocks and, uh, you know, under every, uh, yeah, under every nook and cranny to, to see who's behind uh, certain things. But I do think that it is worthwhile to be very vigilant these days and to be careful about uh, what we consume. Uh, we call it information hygiene, uh, just as one would uh, hand sanitize during COVID-19. I think it's just as important to, 
to question everything. Uh, and unfortunately, we have to do that now um, to really to really understand uh, who's behind our, our news, our information, not just trust every WhatsApp message that comes from your mom's second cousin, um, but really to just to, to, to think through uh, the, the, the potential uh, behind uh, and the, uh, the implications and the intentions behind uh, what we consume. It just means being a more active and a more vigilant citizen. I mean, I suppose when you consider the amount of money, the amount of resources that's put into influence, it actually tells you how much work we as individuals have to do. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think uh, in the film that, that we profiled a number of the campaigns that Bell Pottinger was best known for, one of which was a 540 billion uh, US dollar, million, pardon me, 540 million US dollar account uh, that was done on behalf of the Pentagon during the American invasion of Iraq um, that really had very little impact um, and yet was pervasive in Iraqi uh, mainstream uh, broadcast and radio. Uh, and, you know, that was 20 years ago. So uh, by now, you know, you, one, one must question how much of that kind of work is being done behind the scenes uh, and, and really think it through. Diana Neal, thanks very much indeed. Co-director of the film, the documentary Influence. Do appreciate the time. Thanks very much indeed.